Welcome back to another episode filled with rainbow chasing. I have had a very lucky day today. We got not only the matching tail bow for our head bow, I actually ended up with two of the head bows, but I also got the sweater vest, which I love. It's awesome. And I also got the dress. How cute is that? So I think now we're missing pants, uh, maybe shoes. But there is also a saddlebag and a saddlebag pet that I cannot wait to get. I'm so excited. It looks like a rainbow. Ah! So, but we, we've had a, so, such a lucky run today. I'm very, very excited. We, of course, got some food as well. But <laughs> to get the dress and the sweater back to back and the bows. And I, I think that's so cool. There's our lucky clover from last year. Time Gazer's pretty happy too. I think he's my lucky charm. Previously on Star Stable Stacy, we helped Freya with her homework. Part of that homework was taking pictures of animals, and there was another animal she wanted to, us to investigate in the bushes. Well, we didn't find the animal, but we did find a snake skin. So she asked us to come over here and, and get some more information about it from Miss Amelia, who's great with animals. A mysterious snake skin. Hello, Nova. Sorry, what's that you said? You're looking for a snake? Sorry, but before we start talking about snakes, do you think you could help me pick up these books I just dropped? Thanks. Oh, oh, Amelia, did you drop them or did you throw them in the air without any care? Books, 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 books. Done. What luck that, oh look, there's a puppy. I didn't even notice. He freaked me out a little bit. What luck that you dropped by and could help me out. What kind of snake was it that you're talking about? We only found the skin. So Freya saw a snake and you found this snake skin? I can't say what kind of snake it is just by looking at the skin, but it's probably a grass snake of some kind. As far as I know, there aren't any snakes on the side of the island where the Sunfields farm is. But hey, Freya can borrow some books from me, which she can use to help her write about snakes. There are lots of snakes, facts, Lots of snake facts in them. <laughs> I've got plenty of really good books. Snakes Alive, From Frogs to Crocs, or maybe this one here, The Reptiles of Jorvik. Freya is most welcome to borrow them all since I'm not using any of them right now. Maybe they, you'd like to take them to her for me? Great, good luck with the homework help. Oh, thanks, Amelia. Super nice. You've been gone ages. I knew you'd come back even though Casper thought you wouldn't. What did Amelia say then? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Why have you got like a million books with you? Amelia thought we could find everything we needed to know in one of the books. Can I have a look then? <gasps> look, there's a chapter about how to build a snake trap. Imagine building one and catching the snake I saw. Please, can you help me build a snake trap? Please, please, please. Here it says that we need a mosquito net and a stapler. I know dad has bought loads of mosquito nets to make new mosquito proof windows with. He won't miss it if we borrow just a little. I'm sure there's a stapler somewhere as well. Maybe it's over by the mosquito nets. You can check. Over by the mosquito nets, which are where? Aha! There we go. Oh, mosquito net one of two. Oh, a stapler. Perfect. Hurry! Oh, hooray! You found everything! Now we just need to build the trap. If I read out the instructions, you can build the trap. My teacher says I'm actually really good at reading out loud. Roll up the net into a cylinder. Okay, so you need to roll up the net and then clip it together with the stapler. Use the rem remainder of the net to try to make a tr triangle triangular shape to form the entrance of the trap. Okay, I'm not sure I understand everything, but if we just make a start, I'm sure it'll work out. <laughs> yeah. Just make a start. She did a great job reading, though. Alright, let's see what we have here. Net. Stapler. Cylinder. Oh... Okay. Do we need more? No, I guess not. Oh, now we can do a second one. Three traps built. The trap is looking good. Oh, maybe we put all three together? I don't know. 
The world's best looking snake trap, wouldn't you say? I hope so. Casper, have you seen what a great trap me and Nova have made? Now we need to set out the traps. Just imagine if we actually catch the snake. I'd be so happy. If you set up the traps, I'll carry on with my homework just like I promised. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, where are we putting them? I'm going to stay off horseback because we probably have to be off the horse to set them up. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Whoa, this one's in a way out of the way place, but okay. I guess it's just a case of waiting. <sighs> I should get on with my homework. Can you come back tomorrow and we can check if we've managed to catch the snake? Oh, I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. I hope so too, that would be exciting. While we're here, Martina also has a quest for us. Hello there, Nova. Finally, we found someone who's interested in buying our lovely products here from the farm. Have you met Ed Field from Wolf Hollin? Nice guy, has to be said. Oh, we are currently in the process of working with Mr. Ed Field. Interesting, to say the least. He's really interested in locally produced goods and ingredients, and when I told him we make everything here on the farm, he went bananas with excitement. He didn't want to buy the products without a little taste test first, so could you ride over with these samples I've prepared for him? That'd be great. Hurry now and say hello to Ed from me. Good, we've got some business with him anyway. Good morning, Ed Field. We have a delivery. Awesome. This is what I've been waiting for, you know? Smells amazing. I definitely want to get my hands on more of this. Much more. I mean, I could make the kinds of amazing meals that would bring Yan Jarl himself back to life just so he could have the chance to taste them. Ride back to Martina and tell her I said that. Let her know I'll be buying however much she wants to sell to me. See you, Nova. Thank you. He loved the Martina. How did it go? He loved it? Lovely. Now we've just got to roll up our sleeves and crack on with even more hard work. Great skies are clearing up, Nova. Good times are just around the corner. Thanks for your help. I really mean it. She must. She gave us a t-shirt. A tank top. Because spring is here and warm weather is upon us. Hi, Nova. You just missed the transport to the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. Igor and Frankie just drove off with a truck full of everything they need to get started with setting up our three-star restaurant. You could just meet up with Igor at the camp and see that everything's in order, right? I'm um, sure. After a quick horse exchange, we have made our way to Dino Valley. But I do not see Frankie or Igor, so... Not sure where they are. Professor Einstein, what's up? Igor? There's been no Igor here. I did just hear an awful noise from down by the lake, though. Uh-oh. You mean some kind of transport should have arrived with a cook, a waiter, and a whole heap of furniture? Mm, that noise I heard earlier could most likely have come from a truck driving straight into the lake. That's really quite probable. Why didn't I check what the noise was? Nova, I've never really been that interested in vehicles, I'm afraid. But now I'm aware of the situation, it sounds as though it, it has every likelihood of being really rather serious. Hurry down to the lake and see if you can't find the transport. <laughs> oh no... Oh no! <laughs> Tragedy happened here. I don't see the truck at all. Frankie, what's happening? Oh, he's not going to be able to tell us. Frankie. Frankie, Frankie, Frankie. Frank points at the open water beside him. You see Igor fighting for his life in the freezing water. Uh-oh. Hang on to my horse. We'll pull you out. Thanks, Nova. <clears throat> Nova, now it feels much better. The truck is at the bottom of the lake. I drove the wrong way. Everything's gone. Could you help me, Nova? Only if I, I stop eating horses. Nova, I've never eaten a horse in my life. <laughs> I promise you, Nova. I promise that to you. Oh, okay, okay. I swear. I swear on the grave of my lovely mother. <laughs> I'll never try to eat Chance Hero, or any other horse for that matter. Oh, Nova, is it okay if I eat seahorses instead? Oh, all right. Ride with Igor back to the camp. Oh, no, now he's on our horse. I don't want... Where's Frankie? He must already be on the way. 
Now remember, go this way. Don't go down the other way when you try and get to them because it's a very long process to get there. But that was real quick and easy, right off of the trail. Here you go, Igor. Oh good, Frankie made it back too. Thanks, Nova. All of the equipment for the restaurant has gone, lost forever. I guess I'll have to start on a smaller scale than I'd first hoped. <laughs> no barbecue night to start with. Vegetarian, maybe? Oh, Nova, no horses on the menu, I promise. There were actually a few things from the truck lying around by the lake, Nova. I saw them when I was floating. Crates that hadn't sunk. If we're lucky, Nova. Oh, I hope we're lucky. Would you be able to ride down and get them, Nova? It'd be very nice of you. He's still so creepy. I'm glad Frank made it, though. We managed to secure some of the crates, Igor. Oh, hmm, look at that. Seems as though a few items made it. Nova, let's open up and see what's inside. Hey, <laughs> chairs, tables, oh, a few little goodies. This should be okay. I can open the restaurant with these lovely articles, Nova, even if it'll be a little on the lean side. You're welcome, so welcome to join us any time for something to eat. And as for Chance Hero, well, I'd love to have him for dinner. To join us for dinner, I mean. <laughs> then I declare this restaurant open. Oh, I didn't even see it! There it is over there! Where's Frankie, by the way? Why is he over there bothering Professor Einstein? Oh. That's so cool! This place is turning out to be awesome! Frank? Frank, is that really you? Professor Frank E. You've been gone for years. My beloved brother. What? Her brother? Ah, the twists and turns. I can't take it. Frank's alive. Oh, wow, Nova. My genius brother Frank is really alive. But what on earth has happened to him? He's acting like some kind of zombie. Almost like that guy in Epona. Something terrible must have happened to him. But don't be afraid, I'm going to help you. Me and Nova, a reliable character I've stumbled across in this awful valley. Nova, say hello to Frank. Oh, we've been introduced. Oh, how wonderful. It seems as though Frank really likes you. Oh, Frank, my dear, dear brother. Right, good. Enough with the sentimentality. Uh, no time here for feelings. It's time for me to call in all the favors I've... Oh, I'm owed by my colleagues at the university. I'm going to make sure that we get a delivery of all the very best and most advanced medical equipment available. That way, I can diagnose Frank and then find a cure for whatever bizarre affliction is tormenting him. This will take time, but Frank disappeared ten years ago, so another couple of days won't make any difference. Until then, we've got other business to be getting on with. We mustn't let such things distract us from our plan. Oh, good luck. That's so exciting. I'm so happy for her, but this is really weird. Let's stop and see what Trond needs from us. Hello, Nova. Finally here. Professor Einstein figured out that this is the perfect place for my little shop. She seems to know what she's talking about, so I think I can trust her. Would you do me the honor of taking down the sign that shows the shop is being closed? Thanks. That's the only thing left to do before I can open. Gladly. Oh, and he's got food for- oh, it's on the other side. He's got food for our horses, although we won't need it because we received so much from the leprechaun. It's now officially open. That's so cool. This is turning into quite the little area. Thanks for all your help, Nova. I hope you'll visit me in my little shop sometime soon. Now it's time to open up. See ya. Hooray! Oh, well, Nova, there's nothing we can do to help Frank right now, so there's no point wasting any time thinking about it. You've no doubt already concluded what the next logical step of our plan is, hmm? No? Okay, I'll explain. We've already built facilities for horses here, so clearly the next step is to ensure that there's something for horses and their riders to do. I hear that races are very popular, which means the construction of a race course has a very obvious place here in our plans. A race course which is both challenging and fun. Yes. Nick had an idea, which was surprisingly not that bad. He said we should try to create a race course which gets people more interested in learning about science and nature at the same time as racing, with a combination of fun, some kind of learning, and sport. 
that nobody's thought of it before? I know it'll be an international super hit, as Nick puts it. Ah, oh, well, enough with enthusiasm. First, we need to work out that the route I've already calculated doesn't include intolerable risks for the riders. I want you to ride out onto the ice and make sure there are no more than three deep cracks along my proposed route. Mostly just a mere formality. They're very simple calculations, but you know as well as I do at this stage that we can't take anything for granted when probability is involved. So, there we go. Off with you now. Ooh, so we're helping plot a race course. That's exciting. And she wants no more than three cracks along the way. Examining the ice. No cracks here. Phew. Ooh, we found a crack in the ice. Ooh. Oh, it's right near the, the ramp. We've been running over that crack how many times? That's probably why it's cracked. Oh, we have to tell her bad news. That's our third crack. Bad news, Professor Einstein. So no crack in the ice. Splendid. Full steam ahead then. What? Three cracks? Unbelievable. Oh, well, I suppose I'll just have to go over my calculations again and determine a new optimal race course. While I'm busy with that, there are lots of other things you could be getting on with before we open up the race. For the races, we need markers, which indicate where competitors are supposed to ride. They usually come in the form of flags, but it took me just under four minutes to work out seven different designs that are better than flags. Again, though, we're limited by the depressing technological level of this environment, so I suppose we'll just have to stick to whatever materials we can find around here, and of course follow the tradition of flags when it comes to marking the outer limits of the course. A bonus, the only bonus, of the cold climate here is that the ice is really strong. I have, using thorough experiments, arrived at the conclusion that the best way to construct race limit indication devices is by using icicles. Icicles that you'll, of course, have to collect, you understand. Collect icicles so that we can race limit in- we can- uh, We need icicles. Oh. The icicle broke! Carry on looking for more? Oh no. Alright, one of two. We just can't let it break. Hmm, these icicles are of a relatively acceptable quality. Good work, Nova. Traditionally, race limit indication devices, or flags as you people might call them, are constructed from differently colored fabrics depending on whether they stand on the left or right hand sides of the checkpoints. Far from optimal if you ask me, but I suppose we have to consider how regular racers aren't as rational as you or I and may struggle to see the obvious advantages of a multi-dimensional matrix structure where, with a mere glance, the flag shows everything from optimum speed and angle to the current longitude and height above sea level. People are usually very narrow-minded and not open to new ideas, Nova. People make me sick. To construct our race limit indication devices, we need appropriate material. I've noticed that there's a variety of lichen in different colors here in the valley. Collect the white, black, and red lichen. Hurry up. So we need moss. White, red, and black moss. Oh, okay. Lichen, hugely suboptimal sub material, but it's not as though we can be very choosy out here in the sticks. My calculations once again show that the chance of the mail having arrived has risen to the level that it's once again worth your while to investigate the mailbox. The probability hasn't reached a level where it would also be worth the hassle for me, so according to the laws of logic, the job lands quite neatly in your lap. Off you pop. I don't think she's ever going to check the mail herself. It's always going to be us. Nothing. It's empty. I was right. No mail? Thought so. You thought so? Then you asked. Oh, so she needs us to do some more daily quests and raise our reps so we can continue working on the racetrack. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to keep working on my rep here in Dino Valley, among other areas. Got to work on that sun circle. <laughs> and also chase some rainbows because I really want the rainbow pet bag, saddlebag pet and the saddlebag itself with Chon's face on it. It'll be lots of fun. So I hope you guys are also enjoying the event and I will see you next time. Bye.